not that. Oh, this one, this chick was just annoying. In fact, you know what? I'm thinking I'll throw her back up here again. Crazy the things that men will say when their egos are bruised, typically for me when they take. Okay, presuming the point. Their egos are bruised. No, maybe they're just rationally, uh, like, critically thinking about what you're saying. And they're being, they're, they're, they're offering you a rebuttal. The, just because a man offers you some kind of advice or tells you about a process or tells you something like shares his expertise, that is not always fucking mansplaining. And it is also, if somebody is critical of you, they're not necessarily judging you. Although they should, I think they should, I think men should judge women a whole lot more, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't imply that there is a fragile ego to be bruised. That's where we're starting with this, you know, so that sets, this is, by the way, that's tilling the fields right here. My content too personally. Recently, I've gotten feedback that my content. Taking it personally because it, you are an influencer and it is broadcasting a message that other people disagree with are they going to say everyone takes everything personally if you have an opinion and you express an opinion it is your personal opinion can be viewed as toxic femininity that i need to be careful about the rhetoric that i use that it could make my boys feel like their very existence on this earth is flawed and yes because that's really what we tell young boys that's what we tell boys today is that they should either be gender loathing or to be a good, oh gosh, I should go dig those up. I, I know I have the, I, I'll, I'll dig up the, uh, the, the photos of this. The, that they are, it's, it's like there was a, there used to be a push. I think it was like during the, um, during the Me Too years, right? 2017, 2018. Uh, women who were doing the great, you know, pink hat pussy march, right? They had all these placards that say boys will be boys. And they would like cross out the last boys. And they would say boys will be good humans. Essentially, the message from that is boys are not good humans. They have to, or boys won't be boys. Boys are, if, if your boys will be boys, means you're not a good human. To be a boy is to be not a good human. And that it's wrongful and it's an inconvenience. And that because I'm teaching them to be a good human and a good partner. There's that word again, a good partner. A good partner, not a good husband, not a good wife. Not a girlfriend, not a boyfriend, a partner. Uh, I have the stats, by the way, for like the rise in the use of the word partner from Google, like Google reference or some shit like that. It is like it's like astronomically higher for like starting right around 20, 2006, I think. They will not only hate me, but they're going to hate all women and that I am working against myself to make men hate women. It's a little ironic because girls are too often, and this is not exclusive to culture, raised to believe that we are flawed, that our sole okay. well, purpose is to end up with a man who will validate our entire existence. Okay. If you were talking about 1952, I would agree with you. If you were talking about maybe even the mid 60s, I would agree with you. But since about 1965, every last trope that she's throwing out here has been systematically crushed over the course of four generations. And it's shit like this that drives me fucking insane because, Oh, society teaches boys to be boy. Boys will be boys. Society teaches men not to cry. Society is like this big shibboleth, right? This big, ambiguous, like powerful, what, you know, other thing. Society teaches X, Y, and Z. Anytime anyone tells you society teaches, they are a social constructionist. They think that personality is built by society, by social constructs. When anyone tells you that gender is a social construct, those are social constructionists. Even if it, most of them, most of the people don't even know that they are. Destiny, definitely a social constructionist. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Pretty much anybody who has, has like a real problem with like the red pill, their their answer or their the, the, the reason why the red pill, the empiricism, that is the red pill, is offensive to them is because it challenges social constructionism 
and usually with evolutionary biology, evolutionary psychology, it challenges the idea of the blank slate. The blank slate is everybody starts equal. And then you have layered on top of it, like learning, 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 learning from society and social, this and that and everything else. When in fact, it's really biological. It's really genetic. Most, most of your personality, most, not all of it, but most of your personality is genetically determined. People hate hearing that, but that's the fucking honest truth. So we'll validate our entire existence. Women are told to be to shut up and sit in the corner. Ugh. Not according to for all mankind, <laughs> not according to all these, not according to Disney from, let's say, oh, I don't know, the mid 80s. Who are the fuck is she talking? Where is this being being taught? Not in the schools, certainly not in college, certainly not in high school, certainly not in popular culture or popular media or popular music. They're not be told, being told that. They're told Cardi B's telling them to have a wet ass pussy. <laughs> they're not, if anything, they're being told that they can do anything. But we're still relying on these old 20th century tropes because it sounds like it's It sounds truthy. Work your entire life to build a career, but you're worthless until you're married. At which. Clearly not, because women aren't getting married until they're, t until the zero hour, until they're about 30. Why do you think that more and more women are going to college more? Like, where is that? Where are those stats? See, here's the, this is the point I've, I've made this before is that feminism relies on two fundamental lies. One of those is that women can do anything. Women are superheroes. Women can be astronauts. Women can do they're They're superhuman, but they're also victims at the same time. And, uh, and so that victim side of things is you can do anything, but you're also taught to be a wallflower. Point. You should really put your career dreams aside because, you know, you need to create a family. And by the way, the heavy lifting is going to be on you. So stop being selfish. Oh, yeah. And can you please get your act together and put yourself together because you look like a mess? I thought this was about your boys. I thought that this was about the critique of you being toxically feminine, whatever the fuck that even means and gaslighting your boys or teaching them to be, I don't know, useful betas, maybe partners, but no, we've taken an opportunity to defend her raising her boys to do what to explain the plight of girls. And all that being said, many of us don't hate all men. Don't resent oh. men. Still choose men to be our partners and share there it is. our lives with. I wouldn't worry so much about my sons resenting me or all women. I'm going to put my snarkiness aside. Really? Because it makes me sad that seeking equality is so threatening for some men. There and see, there it is. The see, uh, by the way, that's a logical fallacy. Presuming the point. Presuming that this is what this is the logical conclusion already it like the the argument contains the solution it contains the premise and the solution in the argument itself it's called presuming the point right and so you're already you, like before you can even end this she doesn't even know she's doing this she has no earthly clue that she's like this is just natural it just flows out of her mouth like like nothing that when i choose to do the only thing that i have in my power which is to start change in my home with my boys it makes Okay, start change. Be the change you want to see in your in the world, right? 